uh, once again, let me say good morning to your listeners. I must say on authority that the Ghana Police Service never behaved for first now. And again, I want to say that it's very unfortunate for their style of or the strategy they use in handling the demonstrators. In fact, if that happened at the first day, knowing very well that the very statement that was released by Ghana Police Service indicating that they have requested for application for judgment, I mean, on the demonstration, giving the people demonstrated one day to call off their demonstration was very, very unfortunate. Because, Sana, there's no way, in the sector of security, there's no way you can use a day to call off demonstration by reaching out to all your members to let them know that the police have gone for an application of injection on their demonstration. So for that matter, members should not be at the starting point of the demonstration. And again, assume that even all those who were part of the democracy health groups are being informed. What about the people who are not part of the group who want to voluntarily, you know, join individually? And so for me, I think that the best in Ghana police personnel, I mean, the personnel could have done it. The very people who were able to emerge at the starting point of the demonstration, with their numbers, knowing that what the intelligence I had was that they were having about 500 policemen on the ground. So it tells you that with their numbers, they could have contained the few people who were present in the morning to start a demonstration to their destination. Because if you look at the UN, the U.S. standard, one one. One Ghana police personnel is supposed to take care of 450 civilians. So assuming you have 500 policemen or personnel on the ground, these police personnel, 500, are supposed to take care of 225,000 civilians. So the other question is that the people on the ground at the first day of the demonstration, were they up to 225,000? No. So for me, Ghana police service, um, they shoot body into shame. And one of the things that I was looking forward with respect to their paper or their, their release that came after the first day of the demonstration was to see whether they, they conducted any security assessment that, you know, states that the, the demonstrators were threat to the, the, the security zone, which is the Flaxa House, with regard to for the fact that if they had some suffocated, you know, weapons with them. But that was not. It wasn't stated in their document. It wasn't stated in their release. So clearly, Ghana police service have paid the country when it comes to, you know, how to handle put, I mean, protesters or how to handle, you know, demonstrators. And that's very serious. And going forward, this is something that Ghana police service, they need to learn. Because, look, a situation of this caliber can throw the country into disorder. So th there's a... It you believe this should be a learning experience for the Ghana Police Service because it's not the first time they've turned uh, a peaceful demonstration violent by the actions. Sure. It's not the first time, but I think they should be learning from their past. Just as the IGP said some time back, that he has been able to, you know, uh, learn from some of the failure of his peacefulness and so has been able to adapt certain strategy how to, hand, how to handle certain issues in Ghana here. So I think that they should learn from their past. And look, Sana, from what we are seeing, the difficult time at this very moment is still, I mean, if you, call, if you look at what is happening globally, and then we need a continent. These are, these are very critical issues that they need to consider. Look, um, the statistics show that eight years ago, we used to have about 27 countries that are likely to experience, you know, civil disorder. Now the statistics are rising from 27 to 38. So, and you can see that all the factors that, you know, account for this civil disorder is happening in Ghana here. Talk about the economic and social difficulties that people are facing. People are not having work. I mean, the unemployment rate is high.
Mr. Kwe? Hello? Hello, Mr. Kwe? Uh, I think I've lost Antonia Kwe on the line uh, on that issue. First, let me, uh, two things. First, let me remind you. Uh, that with Vena Purified Water, you are not only guaranteed the pleasure of satisfying your thirst, but you are assured of water that is purified using a series of filtration, reverse osmosis, UV sterilization, and ozonation to meet the standard quality your body needs. With over 100,000 bottles consumed every day, Vena Purified Water has gained acceptance as the number one water brand in Ghana today. Now, with every bottle of Vena Water you consume, it directly contributes to impacting lives through the Vena Changing Lives Initiative. From its of NH project to drilling of boreholes, surgery payments, and payment of fees for brilliant Banidi students, Vena Purified Water continues to support many beneficiaries each year to change their lives for the better. So share the love, get a bottle of Vena Purified Water and enjoy the pure, refreshing taste. Vena Purified Water, changing people's life. Antonia Kwe is back on the line with us. Uh, we lost you there. You were talking about the fact that uh, perhaps this might not be the best time for the Ghana Police Service to behave the way they behave because of the current circumstances we have around us. And you are talking about the fact that a lot more, a lot more countries are uh, in the range of there being civil disobedience of sort. I spoke about the fact that the statistics clearly show that, you know, in the five in the first five years ago, there used to be about 27 countries that are likely to experience what we call civil disorder. And so now, if you catch it, you no know, civil disorder is simply means that when people are agitating and then police try to you know deny them, and then at the point in time the police you know brutality and stuff are not able to control or contain the people. So you see a lot of people trooping to the street. And that, you know, when it happens so, because the people are more than the police, the police cannot contain them. And so it's called for a point where you can't control the people. And so the best thing to do is to find the alternative way by the soldiers coming in to take over power. Because this can, you know, aggravate to the level that they can move to the, 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 the presidency and then make sure that, they, and it's happening in so many countries. And I guess to say that if you look at what is happening, you know, our, in, our, in our dispensation, these difficulties or these factors are clear. And like I, may, I may mention earlier, if you go to countries like DR Congo, there were civil disorder, Angola, Kenya, and even recently in Nigeria, that was 2020-19 there about. Nigeria, look at all stars. These are some of what we call the civil disorder. Unfortunately, in Ghana, we have not experienced civil disorder. And these are very dangerous, you know, circumstances that we need to think about. So I think that the Ghana Police Service must be very careful about their strategic denial of people, citizens who want to exercise their constitutional constitution rights, by demonstrating, because the moment you do that, then you are more or less, you know, pulling people to be more hungry and to to to, to engage themselves in a in a in a behavior which can put this country into civil unrest. Well, this is the Ghana Police Service speaking, and they said they had a meeting with the leaders of Democracy Up, and this was a statement they issued on twenty second September, and it says at the meeting. The, the the police re echoed this that the service is not against any person or a group of persons who want to demonstrate, as it has a track record of providing security for demonstration in the past. However, in the instant case, the police concern was the location of the intended demonstration, the Jubilee House, which is designated a security zone. They are saying that where the people wanted to demonstrate is a security zone. That was why they reacted in a way they reacted. Can, is, is that defense tenable for you? Well, Sana, for, for them to say Flagstar House is a security zone, of course, we all know that it has been securitized. That is, that is a fact. But I think that the behavior of the Ghana Police Service is even more security threat than even the, the state you know, zone. I think the, uh, the, uh, the Flagstar House being a security zone. Look, human security is where we are moving towards now. And I think that it's about time the, the security institutions in Ghana here are being enlightened about the need for human security. Look, the, those days of you know, state security where we intend to protect the state, we, we intend
tend to protect, you know, access. This is a thing that we are moving away from. Because when we protect the state, and then at the end of the day, you leave the human security, there will still be a lot of crime in the system. So for me, for them to have said that, yes, uh, Frank Tarao is a security zone. Of course, but what is more secu I mean, security threat than the action of the Ghana police service towards the people, like I said earlier, which can, who could have thrown the country into disorder? And again, if they say it's a security zone, but the point is that they still have to go further to also establish the fact that there was what we call security threat assessment by the Ghana police service, which indicates that the demonstrators were holding some kind of suffocated, you know, item that could have been more security threat if they were to allow them to pass the place. So for me, for them to say uh, that it, it was a security zone, of course, everybody knows it's a security zone, and they will be using the place. We've been using the place day in and day out. We know it's a security zone. But the point is that when you have not accessed any threat or security threat, how do you then say that a person who is using that same venue is a security threat to the security zone, which is the Plaxa House? I think that it's about time they need to look at the human security, because human security is the order of the day, where we have economic security, we have the food security, we have the environmental security. So it's not about the economic security, where people are unemployed. That is a serious security threat to the state. And clearly, the, the National Security Minister, in, in, in formation of the National Security Strategy, has indicated clearly that unemployment is a serious security threat to the state. So what is more security threat than, you know, the security zone, which is the Plaxa House or the Bibli House? Let me, let me conclude by reading this statement of the Ghana Police Service on, in the same 22nd September 2023 statement to you. Yes, we would like to assure the public that the police service is dedicated to fostering a democratic environment where citizens' rights are upheld while maintaining the security and stability of the nation. Um, with this assurance, what's, the, what's supposed to change with the police approach, uh, the way they approach not only um, handling protests but security in general, if they are to go by what they're saying, that they are dedicated to fostering a democratic environment where citizens' rights are upheld while maintaining the security and stability of the nation. What do they need to do? So now, the Ghana Police Service has a unit we call the Force Police Unit. And professionally, these are men and women who have been trained by UN standards as in how to handle demonstrators or riots. So for me, Ghana Police Service will mistake if they use people who have not been actually been trained as in how to manage demonstrators. Because these are professional people we're talking about. And these are people who are being used by UN in case of any riot in any state. There are people from Ghana here belonging to the foreign police unit who have been sent to those countries to manage the riot. So for me, the Ghana Police Service do have this unit, and no matter what, these are people who are well trained. So if they want to invite other people from other units who are not much, you know, enlightened or conversant with how to handle demonstrators, then they should put them into training. So that at the point in time, people will know how to manage people who are into demonstrating. Not to come by, you know, abusing people and trying to insult people or try to, you know, arrest people when you know that that was not the best way to go. So for me, they should use the, 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 the professional people who already are in the system. And like I made mention earlier, the police form, that is the form police unit. Mr. Akwe, thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you, my brother. Sana. Anthony Akwe is a security expert speaking to us. Uh, and his, his proposal is that the, form, the FPU, the Foreign Police Unit, should be used a bit more when it comes to matters of uh, demonstration. Just a, a, a few messages, I'll, then I'll take a break. This Oscar Gagno says, earlier the police force said they don't have men for the demonstration, but how did they manage to get officers to prevent the protesters to demonstrate? Um, there's Nyaya who says a good morning. To me, the behavior of the police coupled with the, con the content of the Bugri Nabulik tape only goes to confirm um, the notion that the Ghana police has been turned into an MPP 
police force by this non patriotic people's government. Uh, that's near here. And no, true, it wasn't the Ghana police. It was a Kufuado police. Security zone, my foot. That's no, true. And no, good morning. A good morning to Zakaria Freedom, who's joining us from Chebi. Apia Kwesi Samo, who's watching us from Akwetia. There's a no, true, again, who says a Kufuado police. You should be all be ashamed. The citizens have shown their power. Musa at the moment police start to behave as if they are law of a law unto themselves, democracy becomes autocracy. Recently, police adopted dangerous strategy of using experts, uh, as party motion to deny citizens expressing their constitutional rights at the 90th hour. The current police administration has set a bad precedent for this country. Uh, there's also Abiu Mandela who is joining us. As I'm watching live from Kasua Galeria. Greetings to Ni Kamwa Hammond, uh, another listener of Gold in English. Yama from. Uh, good morning to me. Good morning to you. Sheriff Fennec Avapo says, Ghana police personnel uh, will continue to sleep in those single bedroom and still keeping their fridges and freezers outside since they refuse to, to be non-partisan. So they, they do their work. Alas and Sule is joining us saying a good morning. Chris Coy is joining us. Good morning, crew. May God bless you up. Badly. There's um, Patron Solo. I've noted your concern. I'll pass it on. Elizabeth Fodjo is joining us. Uh, good morning to Nilati. Every aspect of our lives is political. Good morning, Senna. A good morning to Abaka Raji joining us. Hadi, I'm a Miala bless and protect you for the good work you guys are doing for Madagana. Radio Gold, no size. Uh, Erica C. Edwin, good morning. Good morning to Sheikh Kwena. Will, will those bloggers come out to join the demonstration if the government hasn't come out about taxing bloggers? Uh, Bernard K. Abua says, another day, another dollar. Good morning, family. A uh, good morning to Amenyavi Stimi, who is saying a good morning to us. Uh, he says his birthday today. So happy birthday to Amenyavi Stimi. Happy, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to a very good friend. Uh, David Agbanyegan was also celebrating his birthday today. And of course, I'm going to once again a happy birthday to you. Uh, there's Los Negos. says, Senna, you made my day by playing adulthood and scam. Uh, I think this should always be your intro every morning. A lovely day. Good morning to you. A good morning to Los Negos who's joining us. A good morning. Lord, we have a few more there. I'm going to say, 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 ono so so dia no e ye ya sa complain say ano no so e de e bai e na e ye message we so aba na we say ni aye or say good morning uh, family to me the behavior of the police coupled with the content the content of the bugri nabu leaked tape only goes to confirm the notion that the Ghana police has has been turned into an MPP police force by this non patriotic people's government enti ni aye Messenger or the a buyer, and so and no, and a year around Babacon, and so a defia cried by or say good morning to you. We vehemently complain about how bad or worse our economy is, and yet still no proactive measures are being taken to that effect. We always give a critical analysis of how we think the economy should be, economy should be run because some believe that the current state of the economy is on autopilot. And what have you, and what have you? Or you see, my point is, we have higher academic institution that is professional institutions that we can fall on for socio economic measures to just to turn the fortune of the failing economy with with time without without you not know, seeking for foreign brains elsewhere to help salvage our economic situation. And all the hashtag love and everything respected by Aaron Babakun Edifia Kra and all the message we by Senna. Mm. Thank you. This is Nana Kofi in Legong who says, Good morning, Senator. Please invite the NDC executive to give us their view on the fact that this Democracy Up demonstration has completely outstayed their stillborn occupied BOG demo. The NDC was hoodwinked by the police to postpone and later abandon their action. This small group, led by this young man, Obi Vomao, defied the police and went ahead and won the heart of Ghanaians. How does the NDC feel about this? Do they still have? The BOG demo on the cars or what? Thank you. Uh, you uh, BOG yes. demo no, on the 3rd. I was going to say that, uh, but since like, uh, 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 on, on the 3rd October, uh, uh, every Tuesday, yes. and a BOG demo no, every basso, and a pan on what you know, BOG demo no. He uh, said it, it will happen. It will happen, uh, it will happen in October. Uh, we'll be right back. We all go pin some Savannah Bento. We all go pin some Savannah Bento. Savannah Bento, 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 Savannah
Savannah Paint from Azar Group. Since 1921, we all go paint some. Apomodin eye japade kese e eno nti me kanfu kovi organic tiger nut powder e dia ma obi bia na apomodin ehia no e ye yaman mu atawia yayam ne kama e frafra wa bia enim enianin ro aye mu ma e ye ma nipadua afa calcium potassium ene iron e ma no mpe ene esi ya din nyina ahye mu ma dia kovi organic we are disappointed and distressed by the country that has weaponized the law, that has weaponized the police force, continue to be pressed and attack them in their own democracy. This is not a democracy we signed up for. This is not a country we signed up for. And we are calling attention to everybody, all media houses, every individual, wherever they are taking us, we have no idea. The police have zero right to be able to arrest demonstrators in this democracy. We are calling on to you. We are so far have no sense where we are. We are calling on every lawyer who wants to, to volunteer. We need lawyers, as many lawyers as we can, to, to descend onto the police headquarters. To descend onto the police headquarters in order to provide legal assistance to every person who has been arrested today. This is not a democracy. For your country, the nation demands your devotion. Let us all unite to uphold it and make it great and strong. We are all involved. We are all involved. We are all involved in building a modern We are all involved. We are all examination center so if the dvla tells you to do an eye examination bring the report go to third eye care vision center you can find them at northridge they are on the premises of sunny fm 
airport residential area, the opposite the Mirage residence close to Association International School. Today is Monday. They open from 8 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., Mondays to Fridays. All you have to do is call these numbers for any further information. 024-59-38-389 or 054-32-87-008. And make sure, don't, please don't joke with your eyes. I keep telling you that. It's very important. I've been joined on the line by lawyer Justice Tremsai. He's uh, an academic and also uh, practices the law. Good morning. Good morning, Sen, and good morning to your listeners. Well, I hope you're well. I'm very well. How about you? I am also doing well. Uh, in fact, Le Stremsai was one of those who are, were at the police, from all accounts we've had, at the police headquarters to help uh, secure some form of bill release for those who were arrested on day one of 